The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to check out the programming we have available for you 24-7, 365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit www.xzbn.net. And for the programming available on the Exxon TV channel, exclusively on Simul TV, visit www.simultv.com. Explanation, my guest this hour is Kevin McQueen, and uh, Kevin was born in Richmond, Kentucky. He has a Bachelor of Arts in English and a Master of Arts in English from uh, Eastern Kentucky University. He is an instructor in the Department of English and Theater at EKU and the author of several books covering such topics as history, biography, historical true crime, natural disasters, folklore, and ghost lore. Now, in his spare time, he is perfecting his vocal impersonation of the cartoon character, Droopy. And joining me now from Kentucky is Kevin McQueen, and Kevin's website is kevinmcqueenstories.com. And Kevin, welcome to the Exxon. Hi, thank you for having me on. All right, I have to ask you, let, let's hear you do Droopy. All right, um, I will address your audience. All right. Hello, all you happy people. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> Very well, I hope. That is fantastic. <laughs> oh, it took years of self-denial oh, to perfect that one. My gosh, that that's a first for the show. Somebody doing droopy. Wow. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, and, and what was it that brought you into the, uh, the area of folklore and ghost lore? Well, probably more ghost lore than folklore. Mm -hmm. It's uh, something I've always been interested in my entire life. And I used to work at a, at a mansion called Whitehall near Richmond, Kentucky. And it was the home of a, of a 19th century emancipationist named Cassius Quay. And the place is allegedly haunted. I'm sorry to say I never really saw anything there, but some of the co-workers did and some mm -hmm. tourists did. I did hear some very interesting things there. I'd had an interest in ghosts and ghost stories long before that, but I thought um, I would write a biography of them since there hadn't been a new one in a long time. And in the biography, I included a lot of ghost stories about the house. And that kind of snowballed into other books on the topic. So tell me, as, as a teacher and someone who uh, deals with the educational field and the people, why do you think ghost stories and ghost lore are still so popular, and it seems like the popularity is gaining in the twenty uh, in the year twenty eighteen? Yeah, you would think, wouldn't you? After a while, that they would lose popularity. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. That's a very good question. I think with a, a lot of scientific developments, it's easier for people to actually test these things on their own. And also, I think, um, as Stanley Kubrick, the director, once noted, ghost stories are optimistic at their very heart because if ghosts are real, it means there's actually life after death. You know, I was speaking to uh, a member of a paranormal investigation team earlier tonight, and, uh, and she said, well, you know, we know we'll never find out the answers when it comes to ghosts, but it's a great 
great way to meet people and uh, to have social outings. Well, that's true, too, yeah. and the stories are so good, and everyone yep. likes a good, scary story. Yeah, I, I would imagine that uh, like ghost hunting is the equivalent of Six Nations, you know, with all the different rides, and you really don't have to go outside, and you can just go into we a have. house and get scared. Uh, tell me, ha- have you, because of your interest in ghosts, have you yourself, have you ever seen a ghost? No, I'm sorry to say that I haven't. Mm. Uh, when I worked at Whitehall, I kept thinking I would because yeah. the place has such a reputation. And I thought, well, okay, I'm, I'm here day in, day out for several hours a day. If mm-hmm. there's anything here, surely I'll see it. Um, some people say, though, that you actually have to be sensitive to these things, which apparently I'm not. Well, I did hear some yeah. things. Well, I would I would say that anybody who can uh, who can impersonate Droopy as well as you do has to be sensitive. Well, I hope so. Maybe I'm just not in the right place <laughs> at the right time. You know, I've been doing this show for going on tw- we're in our 29th year now, and I have gone on ghost walks right across Canada, the United States, throughout the Caribbean, and other places, and I have yet to see a ghost. I have yet to see a UFO. I have yet to see a Bigfoot. I have yet to see uh, any any aspect of the paranormal. And people say, well, Rob, why do you keep doing your show then? It's because I want to believe, but I want to see it for myself before I say I believe. Well, I, I think so too. I think so too. That's a very good attitude to have about it. I, I think it is because... Like, like I've gone on these tours and people swear that they see things and I'm looking at the exact same spot they're looking at and, and I see nothing. Well, open-minded yet skeptical. Yeah. Yeah. Not willing to believe just anything, but at the same time, uh, willing to admit there may be something to it. I think yeah. you really do have to be in the right place at the right time and mm-hmm. that's, that's probably not something that happens very often. I, I believe it's my responsibility as a journalist to have this attitude, and, you know, formerly before I became a broadcaster full-time, I was in the police force, and we were taught that there are three sides to every story, his side, her side, and the truth, and that's the attitude that I brought over to my broadcasting journalistic approach when I do things. I want to hear all the sides of the story and let our listener make up their own mind on what they want to believe or what they want to push aside. All I can do is present as many facts as I can to the listener. And that's why I bring guests on like you, so that you can share your stories that you have acquired from people and give our listeners more of an opportunity to not only enrich their lives, but also to allow them to take more information into the information that they've already accumulated to help them make them, a, uh, you know, their own their own conclusion based on what they've heard and what they believe is ultimately going to be their choice. But when you're doing research for your books, how do you go about, uh, you know, researching stories on on ghosts or or folklore? Well, most of them actually come from old newspapers. Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of folklore there, but mostly it's from newspapers and in in a way is documented right now that doesn't mean all the old newspapers are perfectly accurate and you always have to take a little uh, consideration there that they may not be accurate but um you get all these stories and accumulated they become i think kind of convincing yes it's uh, very seldom i actually speak with a person about a ghost story i do have one book called the Kentucky Book of the Dead, with a chapter about a haunted house in Richmond where I actually spoke with people who lived in the house. It's mm-hmm. one of the few times I've ever interviewed somebody. And I spoke with a number of guides and occasionally tourists who worked at Whitehall to get their stories. So how many books have you written all told, Kevin? Well, I've written 17. Wow. And yeah, the 17th book comes out in only a few days, actually, from uh, Indiana University Press. And what, what's that book going to be called, and what is the content? 
It's called New England Nightmares. Ooh. I'm uh, doing a series of books that I call the American Gothic series. Right. And each book covers a different region, and they're full of uh, true ghost stories, but also stories about historical true crime and grave robberies and uh, monsters and weird lights in the sky and things of that nature. So um, last year, the Midwestern book, Horror in the Heartland, came out, and also a book called Creepy California, because it, it really needed its own book. There were so many stories. Um, Gothic and Strange, mm -hmm. True Tales of the South, came out three years ago from Pelican Publishing. And um, I've signed a contract for the book of Western stories, which should be from Indiana University next year. So you are one busy dude. Uh, I, I keep pretty busy. I take all the books together. There are really hundreds and hundreds of stories in them, and that, that's not counting other books that are mm -hmm. strictly about Kentucky or strictly about Indiana. Well, you and I have to take our first break, Kevin. Please stand by, and we'll come back, and let's start talking about some of the ghost stories that you have in your books. Exo Nation, our guest this hour is Kevin McQueen. And uh, one of his books that uh, we're, we talked about uh, this segment is Gothic and Strange True Tales of the South. Now, for more information on Kevin, if you'd like to find out where you can buy his books, you know, Christmas is coming. I know, I know, I know. It's all We're just getting to September, Rob. Well, you know what? Halloween candy is in all the decorations for Halloween are out. It's just a matter of time before they hit Christmas. So why shouldn't you, the members of the XO Nation, get it? jumpstart on Christmas as well. Visit Kevin's website, kevinmcqueenstories.com and that's K-E-V-E-N mcqueenstories.com and Kevin and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I am Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like exxon sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included 
free video on demand, live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Kevin McQueen is my special guest this hour, Exonation, www.kevinmcqueenstories.com. And Kevin is K-E-V-E-N, and then McQueenStories.com. Uh, Kevin, what is your favorite all-time ghost story that you wrote about? Well, I think probably the one I mentioned a little earlier from Kentucky Book mm-hmm. of the Dead um, about a place in Richmond is one of the scarier ones. Usually when I do a ghost story, a true ghost story, there, there's just something about it. I can't help but see the absurd humor of it, and most of them actually come out kind of funny or tongue-in-cheek, but that one's actually a little creepy. Can you share it with us? Well, the basic story, um, a man who lived there, he was an attorney mm-hmm. back in the 1980s. His wife was a druggist, and it was a very large, really nice old historical house in Richmond, Kentucky, uh, he saw uh, the ghost of a woman standing next to his bed, only I think it was three nights after he moved in. And uh, her description is just beyond belief. She's really frightening looking, had a very deep, mannish, hoarse voice. And most of what she said was uh, indecipherable, but he said she said something about attending a funeral. Now, what makes this a really interesting story, Tammy, is that a few weeks later, a few months later, I I don't remember exactly the details, he was exploring in the attic and he found a painting, and it was a painting of the woman. Wow. And I actually got a picture of the painting, and there's a, there, it's the, uh, the picture is reproduced in the book, So I think that's interesting. Earlier we were talking about uh, people tell ghost stories, and you have to be a little skeptical Mm -hmm. and also a little believing, too, perhaps. Uh, Some stories are more believable than others. And I found this story especially believable because he saw the ghost before he found the painting. Now, if he'd found the painting first and then he saw the ghost, you could just say, well, he saw a painting of this really frightening-looking woman and it got in his subconscious, and he dreamed it. But no, it was actually the reverse. In fact, his wife told me that he told her about the ghost before he found the painting. Now, that is one strange story. But having gone through all the different resources that that you went through in order to pick up the the stories that you included in your books how did you how did you put how did you select the story to go in the book well that was one that i'd actually been interested in for quite a while i first heard the story in 1985 Mm -hmm. when i was just a teenager and the story had just sort of stayed in my head i had a newspaper clipping or two about it and then uh, years later, when I wrote the book, I thought, you know, that would be a great story to put in. And I managed to contact the man and his wife, and they were happy to talk about it. And by that point, they'd moved out of the house. Right. But they also had a lot of stories by then that were not in the newspaper over the ensuing 30 years or so. But going through the newspaper clippings and uh, re- doing research and resource searching for your for your book, how do you... How do you decide what is going to make the book and what is not going to? Well, some stories are just better and more believable than others. Mm -hmm. And some of them are actually more well-documented. Sometimes uh, I will look up names in the census to see if the people actually existed. And if they do, I think that's that's pretty good evidence because most people, especially back in the 19th century, aren't going to have their names put in the newspaper that they've seen a ghost unless they really were convinced that they had. Because there was more of a stigma, I think, about it back then. What, what, is, what, what in your opinion, has changed to 
uh, in society to make it much more easy to talk about uh, ghost hauntings, things that go bump in the night, extraterrestrials, Bigfoot, and so on. I think people are just perhaps more open-minded, more accepting of opposing beliefs, perhaps, Mm -hmm. than they used to be. It's not just ghosts and paranormal, but but pretty much across the board. Well, what else would be considered uh, as a taboo subject back then that is open to conversation these days? Oh, anything from diseases to alcoholism to domestic abuse. Things of that nature were just things that weren't talked about very much at the time, and mm-hmm. now they are. Yeah, you know, well, I, I, I'm just thinking about those things. Yeah, alcoholism has always been talked about. I've, I've never seen. It's, it's kind of hard to, to hide the fact that you're an alcoholic compared to the fact that you've seen a ghost. So well, that's I'm, true. I'm just trying I to. I think maybe, maybe what I mean is. Uh, the attitude toward alcoholism is perhaps more accepting. People now view it as a disease mm-hmm. rather than a complete, total character flaw. Gotcha, gotcha. Some of the other uh, books that you've written about are Natural Disasters, uh, Historical True Crime, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a crime buff. What kind of historical crimes have you written about in your books? Well, I try to write about crimes that are not really that famous. Mm-hmm. For example, there have been so many books about Lizzie Borden or Jack the Ripper, oh, yeah. and I will refer to them here and there in the stories, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I try to avoid things that have been written about too much. So what kind of crimes have you written about? Oh, all kinds of, oh, uh, let me see. So many of them. Uh, in fact, I'm working on one now that's all Midwestern. Mm-hmm murders from uh, Midwestern states. Um, I've done one on Indiana. Actually, I've done three, I think, on Indiana murders. And one on uh, Louisville, Kentucky murders. Is there one part of the United States that has more um, true crime cases than other parts of the United States? For example, I would imagine that there's a lot more in the state of New York compared to the state of Arizona just because of the number of population in each state. Is this what would would bring forth a, a story that you would be interested in, or is it just the uniqueness, the rareness, the, the characters that are involved in the story? Well, it is characters involved, personalities, mm-hmm. um, level of punishment, if at all, um, atrocity of the crime, how well planned it was, uh, factors of that nature, uh, strangeness of methods. There's a lot to consider. Um, Just as with some ghost stories are more convincing than others, some true crime stories are more interesting than others. So oh, you were asking about populations. Uh, I don't really yeah. think any areas of the nation would be more open to crime than others. I do think you're right that in places with a heavy population, right. you could expect more crimes. But in a place like Arizona, the law was not very well carried out or fulfilled. So people seem to get away with it more. So I guess in those areas, they truly did get away with murder. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of the running, I wouldn't call it a joke exactly, mm-hmm. but a running theme through several of my crimes is how, or several of my books, is how easily women got away with murder back in the old days. Times certainly have changed. Yeah, it really has. Uh, there were all male juries, but they were so squeamish about mm-hmm. convicting women that they generally let them off with a, with a slap on the wrist, and maybe not even that much. That, that is, you know, in today's society, women are demanding equal rights, and uh, uh, I agree that they should have them. You know, you work, this, you do the same job, you should get the same pay. And I look at, I look throughout history, and some of the greatest countries in the world have been led by women. So, you know, I, I can understand that, but I certainly don't agree with the, the attitude that just because the person is a woman, they should not get the same sentence or the same treatment in a court of law than a man would. I think so, too. It's, it's an interesting thing, and you don't really hear very much about it. Yeah. What's your favorite type of book to write? Oh, anything dealing with history. 
and uh, of course the paranormal. And I've always mm-hmm. said if you can combine history with the paranormal, then you really do have something good. I think they're called ghost walks and ghost tours. Yeah, it's amazing how often a true crime story actually will have a ghost angle. Really? Often, you know, the uh, ghosts of victims will be seen in the places where they were killed, and sometimes the ghosts of mm-hmm. murderers, too. Well, that's, well yes. And, uh, and uh, that, is, that, is, uh, that is very well known throughout the United Kingdom in the old castles where a lot of things have, you know, have gone wrong and people have died. Uh, the Tower of London is haunted. And, you know, like, that's a, that's a very good point. But something that, that, I, uh, that I've noticed a lot is that you never see or hear of people who have seen ghosts or apparitions back a certain time, like, you won't have the apparitions of, uh, for example, um, nobody's seen an apparition of a Neanderthal man, and I, I can't understand why. If the, if the logic behind ghosts and hauntings is such that, you know, the spirits never, you know, some spirits choose to stay, other spirits choose to go, and there, there are many explanations for why places are haunted, and yet nobody has seen a... Uh, a ghost of a Neanderthal. And that just baffles yeah, me. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right, you and I have to take our break for the news. Please stand by. Exxon Nation, our guest this hour is Kevin McQueen. His website is kevinmcqueenstories.com, and we'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. ABS Media Day. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. 
It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Explanation, if you'd like to get your complimentary copy of the X Chronicles newspaper, it's available online at www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com. And if you're someone who would like to have a hard copy in your hands, the X Chronicles newspaper is available in paperback form, 11 by, let me see, yeah, 11 by 8.5, full color, all 92 pages of it, and it's available at Amazon.com. Our guest this hour is Kevin McQueen. His website is kevinmcqueenstories.com. Tell me, Kevin, is it harder to be an author today with all the uh, self-publishing people that are out there compared to when when all of the publishing was done by established publishing houses? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not really sure how to answer. Uh, it is true that pretty much anybody can be published now. Mm-hmm. So that means a lot of really good books are out that would not have been published without self-publishing. But I think it probably also means there's a lot of pretty bad books out there, too. Yeah, I think the latest statistic was uh, every month there are are in excess of 30,000 new books that are hitting the marketplace. And is, is it hard for an author to make sure that their book gets the right kind of attention being, you know, having the chance to just get lost in the sheer number of uh, publications that are now coming out. It probably is because there's such a glut on the market, Mm -hmm. such a, you know, flooded market in almost every category. It seems like most of them are books of poetry or books of fiction. So how how do you get your book to the point where people take notice and, and they buy it? Well, I've uh, had books published since 2001, mm-hmm. so 17 years, and I've sort of built up not, um, I'd call it a cult audience. So there is something of an audience out there for when I release something. And uh, the numbers seem to be growing, which is very good. That's one very good thing about the Internet. Uh, okay, you said uh, a cult following. Uh, what kind of, well, what, how does somebody meet the criteria for you to th- say that they're a member of your following? Is it sheer just by buying the book? Is it uh, the genre of the book? Is it a specific it, age group? It doesn't really seem to be a particular age group that mm-hmm. I know of. Uh, I do book signings, and right. people of uh, every age come to the table. Um, I think they just like the subject matter. And if they read one book, they seem to want all the other ones, too. So your your books are, 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 are basically nonfiction. Yes, I've never written a fictional book. I yeah. just don't have the imagination for it. I've I've talked to a number of authors over the years, and they say that it's easier to get a story across using fiction than it is turning it into a nonfiction because it's easier for the for the reader to adapt an idea in a nonfiction uh, format. As an author and as a teacher yourself, how do you see that? Is that a person's perspective, or is that the way it is? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, some people uh, just seem to take to fiction better mm-hmm. than nonfiction. I guess they consider fic- nonfiction to be just, you know, just boring facts, but I always say nothing in the world is stranger than truth. That is that is very true. It, 
history is full of such bizarre moments, things that no author of fiction would dare put in a novel because everyone would read it and say, well, that's impossible, that mm-hmm. could never happen. I have a term for it. I call it real-life surrealism. I like that. But isn't it true that history itself is has a ver- uh, has quite a few examples of uh, fiction in it itself for example the fact that uh, you know Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas that well, that's fiction the vikings were here way before so, Christopher Columbus yeah uh, it's it's a hard thing to uh, discern sometimes yeah. stories that really aren't necessarily true become told over and over and over and then they become history and it takes a lot of debunking but but as an ac- separate them. but as an academic, when you look at, I'll, we'll just use the example of Christopher Columbus. The facts are iris, you know, you can't deny the fact that Columbus did not discover America, and yet in textbooks that are being given to kids in schools across Canada, the United States, and around the world. Christopher Columbus is the person who discovers America, not the Vikings. And yet, after you learn about Christopher Columbus, you go a few grades higher, and then, you, then you've then you got the story about the Vikings, Greenland, and so on and so forth. What does this tell us about history itself? And what does this tell us about the, the educational field that allows these kind of misperceptions to continue? I'm not sure what it really says about history, but I think it says a lot about human nature, and that is we like stories, and we like simple stories. And it's a lot simpler just to say Columbus discovered America than to clutter up the narrative with all of these facts that don't really fit. So you have to kind of dig to find these things that aren't uh, part of the mainstream narrative of history. But they're there if you look. Well, I was taught taught about the Vikings before I was taught about Christopher Columbus. And this is why, over the years, when people tell me, oh, Christopher Columbus discovered the Americans, no, what's the matter? Don't you know your history, for God's sake? It was the Vikings. You know, and and then the information that the archaeologists are finding that are putting a big question mark into the into the so-called history of the world. I just find it amazing that nobody is willing to to set the record straight on certain things and that the lie and the deceit is allowed to continue. Yeah? I guess it just takes an overwhelming amount of evidence for people to finally throw in the towel and say, well, okay, we've been telling the story wrong all these years, so now we're going to correct it. And yet if a politician does that, he's nailed to the cross. Yeah, that's true. People like their stories. They like stories that are very, very plainly told and simple, and they want clear-cut villains and heroes. Or, or is it the fact that academia doesn't want to look like they've uh, they've screwed up, and that they've? Oh, I think that has a lot to do yeah. with it. Um, are your books gauged to any specific age group? Not really. Um, I have people who are fans of all ages. Mm -hmm. I notice a lot of the, uh, I guess, in the millennials, people in their 20s seem to be very interested in them, possibly because they're really into the goth thing. And these are very gothic kinds of stories. How do you classify a story as being gothic? What, what, how is it brought about in order to get that classification as gothic? Well, elements of the supernatural or paranormal, including but not limited to ghosts and haunted houses and murders and Mm. things of that nature. I I didn't uh, I didn't know that the paranormal murders this and that thing were actually part of the goth scene. Well, they're into the darkness, the dark side of human nature. I guess you'd say. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, natural disasters is another topic for a book that you've done. Can you share a little insight into what that book's yeah. about? Actually, it's only one book, and I need to do more. I wrote a book about the Louisville tornado of 1890, mm-hmm. which is one of the great forgotten disasters in American history. It was uh, one of the worst tornadoes uh, up to that point, especially, and yet everyone has forgotten it. Even in Louisville, it's not very well known. So what other stories 
are included in that in that one book when it comes to natural disasters. Can you share a couple of uh, titles with us, or a couple of chapters? Oh, that that's uh, the that book only contains the story. Of, well, I, I guess it actually contains stories of other Kentucky tornadoes as well before 1890. But that's the main focus of the story. I'm thinking of doing one on the 1974 tornado outbreak that went over a large part of America. Hmm. Yeah, I remember those. Uh, there, there were quite a few tornadoes that year. And uh, how about any, uh, is there anything about floods? Is there anything about uh, severe uh, lightning storms? Or or is it just the, tf- the, the tornadoes? Uh, so far, it's just the tornado book. But I would like to write mm-hmm. more on the subject. I've always found that very interesting, too. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And Exo Nation, if you'd like to uh, contact uh, John McQueen and find out anything more about his <laughs> his books. Man. All you need to do is go to his website, kevinmcqueenstories.com. That's www.kevinmcqueenstories.com. And if you're saying, Rob... That wasn't four segments. That was only three. You know what, Exo Nation? You're right, because I don't know what else I could talk about. Uh, I tried to get a conversation going, but I couldn't. I don't know what else to say, Exo Nation, except I'll be back on the other side of this break. As we continue here in our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, as we continue to investigate the world of the paranormal, the science of parapsychology, and uh, listen to teachers do their impersonation of Droopy. It's a fitting, it's a very fitting imitation for for the gentleman, I must say. I'm Rob McConnell. I'll be back. Don't go away. heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well it is, but you can have it today right now. It is Simo TV. Simo TV offers with the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci-Fi and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com 
or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light.